So now that we're happy with all the the animated parts that we've set up, we need to go up to this window here and change it to animation. And it's going to pop up with this window here. We're going to click and drag our project folder down to our timeline. And it's going to pop up with this. Just click the first option. When we're in the animation window, it's going to default at the widescreen. We need to change our canvas size first. So we're going to click our scene. And you're going to see down in the inspector, there's a bunch of numbers. You're going to see size width and size height. Make sure to deselect fix aspect ratio. You need to set the width and height to what your original canvas was. And I mean the grey box, not the white part. So we're going to set this to 320 by 320, because that's what I did for this one. There we go. It's going to be a little bit funky, but we're just going to position this into the box like so. So now everything that you see in this box here is going to be what's visible as an emote. This is our animation timeline. First things first is you're gonna see this bar across the top. My head's kind of covering it. Let me just show you down here. There we go. You're gonna see there's duration and it's gonna show you how many frames are in your animation. Bear in mind that for Twitch the maximum amount of frames you can have is 60. And that's not frames per second, it's maximum frames. I usually go just below it because I don't trust myself. <laughs> you can um, adjust this as well. You can go ahead and click the drop down little arrow here. It's going to pop up three things. Don't worry about the bottom two. You just need to click the live to do parameters one. And you're going to see all the parameters that you set up. Kind of neat. You're gonna see this little slidey bar and this is where you are currently in the timeline. So if we have it here we're at frame zero. You can see a little ticker here that shows which frame you're on. You can also set the frame rate within the inspector. I usually just do 30 frames per second for um, twitch emotes. But you can have a 60 frame per second emote, it's just harder to fit all of the... If you're doing a more complex animation, it's going to look a little bit fast. <laughs> Alright, let's get started. We're going to go to the beginning and just set everything to zero. You can click and drag any points that you put on the timeline too. So everything is going to be at zero at the start. So let's have a quick look at our reference once again. Our references key. So they kind of look at the camera first and then look down. Then scribble, then nod. So we're going to have them looking at the camera for a little bit. So if we keep our head nod at zero for a little bit longer. Like this. This is going to completely depend on how you like to animate. For me personally, I like to do one thing at a time. <laughs> So we're going to start with a head nod because this is where I find it logically easiest to start. So next we need our head to come down. And you're going to see this is why I was talking about the the numbers earlier. So this one goes to up to minus 30 and it's a little bit easier just to tweak the numbers like minus 20 or minus 25 compared to one that just has one, which would be decimal points. So it's really just how easy is it to put numbers in? <laughs> you can also play from here to sort of see what the timings are like. So we kind of want her to nod a little bit while she's writing. So let's put this minus 25 to minus 30 to minus 25. So you'll see now that she's looking like she's doing stuff. Maybe one more. Scribble, scribble, scribble. Okay. And then up to a nod. 
where she looks at the camera first before doing the nod. We don't want this to go all the way up either. See, so yeah, you can never go wrong by overextending your parameters either, because you can tweak it wherever you want on the parameter. And we want this to be a bit of a faster nod, so we're going to go like this. You can always go back and check your numbers too by clicking on them. Set this back to zero. Let's just have a look how that looks. Maybe it's a little bit too fast at the end, so we can go ahead and tweak these a little. Okay. So I want to add a little bit more nods to the end, but as you can see I'm at my frame cap. What you can do is click and drag to select all of these, and then I can just move this along. That way I have more space to add extra things. Let's shift this along just a tiny bit. So we have our nod. She's looking down and she's nodding. Yeah. So now we want to do our eyes down. We want to stagger it a little bit from when our head goes down. So let's put it around about here. Set zero to here. This is where our animation starts. And as she's looking down, put the eyes down to about here. It is a little bit of trial and error to see what looks good. Okay. And then as our head comes back up, we want to set this like this. Put our eyes back up. Let's see how this looks. No, I thought might, what might be cute is if we have the eyes also move just a little bit with the head nod too. Let's, it's all about experimentation, just try things out. Because we kind of want the eyes to be centered on our emote like this. Alright, I think that looks good. So with our hair sway... We want this to sway when she's in motion, is the best way to put it. So I imagine when our head goes down, we want this to just sway a little bit. We're gonna get started with our notebook now. So we want this to follow our head. So if you look at our timeline, you're going to see the little dots where our keyforms are placed. We can sort of follow along with our head nod a little bit here. So we're going to set this to zero here. And then bring this down. So it's going to follow our head, as you can see. And we don't actually need our notebook to move all that much. We're going to set this here and bring it back up like so. Let's have a little look how this looks. We could even have it move a little bit when she's nodding. I think that might look good. So if we do this... What we could do is have our notebook slightly down. Like this. And then bring it up when she nods. And you know what? We could actually start it on that slightly negative one. Like this. So then we can end it on that. Like this. So it has a little bit more bounce to it. So next we're going to do our pencil scribble slash pencil moving, which will be when our notebook is down. So let's set these to zero right as our notebook comes down. 
I'm going to set our move first. So we want our pencil going up and down our canvas. I want this to be kind of wide sweeping, I feel. Maybe like this. Might be a little bit too much. It can be a little bit distracting just to add um, too much motion. But you want enough so that it can still be seen. I think that looks a bit better. So now we want to add our scribbling motion. We want to alternate this a little bit different to the moving, so it looks a bit more interesting. Alright, let's check this. Oh, look at them scribble! <laughs> so we're gonna have our mouth open as she lifts her head here. When she goes up for the first nod, I think, we'll have the mouth go away. <laughs> and then we'll have it close at the end of the animation. Let's check how this looks. We want to add a little bit more hair physics, I feel, for when the, the scribbly scribbly is happening. Oh, that's too fast. Too fast. Slow it down. We don't want it to be too jittery. Can you copy and paste keyframes? Yes, you can. Um, so sometimes when I'm, let's say I want to copy this motion, you just select them, then wherever you want, down here, let's say. So you can do that if you have like a repetitive motion. Let's uh, stretch this out a little bit more actually. See how this looks. I think this bit here is a little bit too soon. Yeah, we want the hair to sway a little bit faster, right? towards the end. Alright, I think we're done with this emote. I think it looks good. So next thing we need to do, because obviously we don't want the background, we want it to be transparent. We're going to go back to our live to d and we're going to delete our background layers. So this is going to be transparent now. Save it. We go back to our scene. You'll notice that the background is now gone. Next we need to actually export it. I'd recommend saving and then we go to file export image slash video and you'll see gif animation you might want to set the frame rate up because it defaults at 16 i like to have it at 30 and make sure that output work area is selected because then it will crop it to your box click high quality loop make the background transparent and error diffusion press ok and then name it. Let's um, see how the file works. There we go. There's a little guy. I can uh, make this a little bigger. So here's what we made.